Hey folks, Dr. Groovy Scott Grove here. I was just sitting down uh, playing Main Street by Bob Seger, and I wasn't going to teach it, but I'm kind of going to teach it in the middle of a blues backing track. So does it give you an actual blues thing? I don't know, but it sounds groovy to me, so I'm going to stick it here if you don't like it. Hey, there's a whole bunch of other blues tracks you can blues lessons you can pick from, but this is number 13, so it might be unlucky for you if you're a diehard blues fan. But um, if I stick it in the key of E, which I'm gonna, uh, Main Street sounds kind of like this. So that kind of a thing. With the backing track, I'll be teaching you licks that kind of sound like that. But they can go other places because the chords change underneath, okay? So I'll do a quick sweep thing into it, but uh, it's very easy. So it goes over the D shape up here. Um, so it's like this. <laughs> So very mellow, but I think groovy. Therefore, it goes in the groovy lesson. Okay, so stick around and let's learn this one if you dug it. Awesome. Thanks for sticking around for those of you who uh, dug it, <laughs> as I said. Um, I was playing here in the neck position to get that really mellow sound. But for purposes of that hum... I'm going to go to the four position. Okay, shut that up a little bit. Okay, so the thing about this one is, like I said, it's shaped like a D, but we're moving it up two frets for an E. You can already hear what's getting ready to happen. So from G string, B string, E string, we're doing 16, 17, 16. Okay. The first thing I did um, in the key of E was went 16, uh, 17, 19. So I went all the way up to the uh, B note on the high E. Kind of a sweet thing. Okay, so I actually just raked it across there. And there's not going to be any main major structure here. It's just stuff that you can do over certain chords. So in E, of course, you can go and bend it up a whole step. Like that. And you can also go underneath it and do that. So 17, pre-bent or bend it up pre-bend is when you start with it bent up already sounds very cool with the volume pedal if you want to use one um, start with it on zero and kind of fade it in okay the other stuff you can bend around on this stuff is on the uh, 16th fret here on the um, G string as you can see if because I'm doing the D shape Okay, so anything that's in that thing you can bend. Um, so whole step on the G string. B e string, I'm sorry, B string. But on the uh, high E string, if you're right there on that thing, you can only go half. But on the, 
if you go up one more fret, you can do whole step, go back half step, and do a half step bend. So you get. Okay, so you can do all of those. Okay, so in the key of E, I'm just going to stick to those ideas. Again, I'm not giving you actual licks, I'm giving you ideas. There, the backing track went to A, so, so did I. For now, I'm going to do the A, bend it all the way up and then come back half a step because the backing track goes back to E. So we're doing a third of E, part of the original chord. So there were all those bends I told you we could use. Sounds very cool. Now, then, when we go to the uh, feedback, it's right at the edge of feedback. Yes, I'm playing that loud. <laughs> um, when it goes to the A, we can stay on E, or we can go back to the A again. But I like the uh, E um, because you can play everything that you did in E um, while you're in A, so it makes no real difference. But uh, when it goes to the A the second time, let's get an idea. E, I'm gonna go to E. B. Okay, so a lot to gain to make this uh, happen. Um, if you have no gain on your guitar, then it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, so sustain is important. That's why I'm at the edge of feedback here. Okay, so hopefully you understand uh, the concept behind this. You can use three shapes that I want to point out. Again, the D shape. And then you can also use um, the F shape if you want when we go to like A. that back to the E. I'm using the F shape there for the E. And then the A shape you can use on the B. A shape on the A. And then back to the D shape. Or the F shape. So what's happening is if you do go to the F shape for the E, see where my pinky goes up for that uh, melody, it finally triggers your ear to know that you're in that D shape finally. Okay, so you can see how I transitioned from one to the other. So I'll do that real quick and then get out of here. I'll try to show very clearly if I'm using an A shape over the chord changes or if I'm using an F shape or just the one and only D shape that I'll use, okay?
Okay, so very cool. Um, hope you dug that and got some ideas out of there. Um, again, just very basic shapes and a very different sound over the uh, blues track, but it's usable in certain ways. It's just a way to express yourself, and if that's how you're feeling, play it that way. All right, you guys stay groovy. Uh, stick around for uh, lick number 14 tomorrow, and um, we'll go to 15, and then I'll switch to uh, a different style or a different instrument, whatever uh, tickles my pickle. All right, catch you tomorrow. Thank you.